Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at the Bauman Mercier Riviera 36 millimeter. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as an authorized dealer. And in this video, we'll do a deep dive in this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout the video, you wanna learn more or purchase the watch, link will be in the description down below to the product page. But guys, without further ado, let's jump in to the video and look at the watch. Now, starting with a bit of background, Bauman Mercier was founded in 1830 in Switzerland, with the brand now residing underneath the larger umbrella of the Richemont Group, a collection of watchmakers that also includes JLC, Langa, Vacheron Constantin, IWC, and Cartier, just to name a few. Now, Bauman Mercier aims to act as a gateway to luxury option with an emphasis on value for dollar, both in terms of finishing, as well as an impressive selection of in-house calibers in certain models. Now, today we're going to be reviewing a newer creation and an underrated option from the brand with their integrated sports style watch with the Riviera. Here showcasing a smaller but highly wearable 36 millimeter case size. The Riviera model family dates back to 1973 and was revived in 2021 and provides a sportier option with an on-trend integrated style bracelet. On wrist, the 36 millimeter wide by 44 millimeter long by 9.6 millimeter tall Riviera case represents a wearing experience that leans towards the smaller end of the spectrum, which is in keeping with the current industry trends of favoring smaller models as opposed to the larger models that we saw in the early 2000s. Now with this being the case, it is important to mention that there is a larger option available if you did want to expand out your horizons, which I've actually reviewed on the channel if you want to check that out. But this is really more for those that want to have a smaller presence on the wrist, those that have smaller wrists, with this watch being best suited for wrists, I would say seven inches or 17.8 centimeters and below. One aspect that does alter the wearing experience to some extent is the nature of the first center link of the bracelet, where it meets the case, which is relatively fixed in position and does extend the theoretical lug to lug to just around 48 millimeters, though it's sharply downswept, so I don't think this is an accurate representation as well. Case architecture is largely angular, offering prominent facets along the case sides and edges of the 12 sided bezel, which are affixed with four hex head screws. Though it displays majority brush finish, the edges of the bezel do offer subtle hits of polishing that naturally attract the eye in brighter conditions. At three, a 6.5 eight-sided crown lies without safety of crown guards with the machine channel traveling its circumference. Between the crown, the case back, which is also fixed with four screws, the smaller Riviera is rated to 50 meters of water resistance. Now, keeping the watch in place while also providing one of the model's strongest selling propositions, we have an integrated brush bracelet that meets the central case at 9 millimeters wide at the inner links that are equipped with an easily operated quick release mechanism in the event that you did want to lean into one of B&M's excellent rubber straps. The bracelet itself is composed of solid stainless steel with screw adjusted three link design and is a joy to put on the wrist. The majority of this bracelet exhibits vertical brushing while tapering from 20 millimeters where the bracelet meets the case to around 16 millimeters at the hidden push button dual deploying clasp that is signed with the B&M logo. Constructed with polished and milled components, the clasp operates well and also benefits from the inclusion of two half links to help ensure a perfect fit. Probably a bigger deal here with an integrated style bracelet than in most instances. Jumping back to the front of the watch and set beneath the safety of a flat sapphire crystal, we have a dial that leans into certain elements we often associated with this integrated category while also showcasing some solid finishing for this range. Starting at the dial's outskirts, it's important to note that the watch lacks anything resembling a sloping rehot or chapter ring also leaving behind the additional time-telling utility offered by any type of minute track. Applied and polished rectangular indices are supplied everywhere but noon and six, with those positions being inhabited by oversized Roman numerals oriented around the dial center. A stylized Dauphine-style handset is again executed in polished steel with a small skeletonized element near the base of each hand. This being a sportier design at the end of the day, the Riviera asks for luminescent material on the dial and hands that adds some nighttime utility while not being overly impressive and competing with dive watches, for example. We have a central surface executed with an imprinted geometric design in a reflective navy blue format. Adding another slice of day-to-day -day utility is a date aperture at three, allowing view of a simple black on white date disc lying underneath. Now turning the Riviera over, we take up view of one of the most ubiquitous third-party calibers on the market with the form of the Salita SW 200. Now where elevated options within B&M's collections lean into their Baumatic calibers, which are going to have that extended power reserve. You'll see this in their Clifton Baumatics as well as the Riviera Baumatics at 42 millimeters. This more attainable 36 millimeter Riviera packs a more powerful value proposition by way of its standard caliber, although omitting some of the additional function power reserve that comes with those Baumatic calibers. 
calibers. And in this case, the SW200 just comes with the no-nonsense approach, hacking and hand-winding, 28,800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz. And speaking anecdotally to the accuracy of this piece, it was running it in decent time. I wouldn't say it was exceptional, uh, but still running at plus 4 to plus 9 seconds when testing across five different positions, so well within the parameters of what Salita is going to quote from their factory standards. So now to unpack, looking at some pros and cons affiliated with the Riviera 36. Now, let's start with some just considerations more towards the con side. I think number one is just this is one of many in the field of integrated watches. It has been played out quite a bit. And now there are plenty of options at a variety of different price ranges. So that is something you have to consider when looking at this watch. You have no limited supply of options when it comes to watches of this styling nowadays. The other point I'll mention is compared to, say, the other watches within the Riviera family, you're not getting the extended power reserve here, but you are getting the upside of the more attainable price tag. And then you're also only getting 50 meters of water resistance. This might be an issue for some. For others like myself who don't really put their watches through a ton of paces when it comes to water, uh, might not be an issue whatsoever. Now let's move over to the pro side. Now despite this being a very busy collection of watches with this integrated styling, very few, I think, are putting their sights on this watch. I would say it's underrated. It's a sleeper option. And if you want to get something that's different while also having history that can date back to the 1970s, I think the Riviera is certainly one of the leaders in its price segment. Finishing is very well done across the board. The bracelet is well done. You'll have no desire to look elsewhere for a different strap. The case does have some additional layers to it, which I really like. The hits of polishing are subtle, but well done. And one thing I will give this watch credit for is sure, it is busy when you're talking about integrated sports watches. They all typically wear larger, but there is not as many available options for those that, say, have a medium to smaller size wrist. So if you want something that wears like, say, a Rolex Day Date, as an example, wears like a 36, 37 millimeter on wrist, this might be in your sweet spot. And if you're not someone who needs 100 meters of water resistance and are just looking for a watch of this styling in this sub $3,000 range from a brand that certainly is overlooked, this should absolutely be on your sites if you are looking at a watch in this range. All right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That really does help. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, it is available on our website, teddybaldeser.com. We're an authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. And in addition to that, it is a great way to also support our content on our main channel. We don't take money from the brands that produce the content here. So that's just the best way to really support us and to allow us to continue to foster a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. So thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.